Okay, now it was better. Great. Okay. So programmable data plane switches can execute custom logic uh, on packets at line length. Uh, if the orders of magnitude are your throughput and lower latency than uh, foundational servers. And previous work has demonstrated the huge potential that these switches hold, uh, not only in traditional networking applications, but also in server workloads such as caching, aggregations, and query processing. However, these applications are designed for a single switch, therefore limiting applicability in production data centers. Uh, why is it so challenging to scale stateful data plane applications? To better understand that, let's take uh, a simple adaptive routing application as an example. We first define the term telephone that mice flows. Uh, elephant flows are flows that, uh, that send data at a high rate, uh, and mice flows send data at a low rate. At first, both mice and elephant flows can be routed by S1, uh, which is the switch in the top left, via the red or blue link. However, if there are too many elephant flows, we would like to route mice flows through the red link. So we write the following code and, write and run it on, the, uh, on S1. The switch maintains a counter on elephant flows, um, a counter of elephant flows, sorry, and the flows table. On each packet, the switch updates the flow table and the counter, and if the counter exceeds the threshold, uh, then it changes the routing policy. Uh, now we would like to run these applications on two switches, S1 and S2. However, we notice that it doesn't work as expected. If two over, T over two elephant flows travel to S1, and uh, another T over uh, two elephant flows travel to S2, then there are T elephant flows in the system, yet our policy does not kick in. And the reason for that is because without sharing the state between the switches, each switch is only a local view of the network. So how can we share states? One approach would be to introduce a centralized entity, uh, for example, a controller. The controller can then periodically pull state from the switches and reconfigure the switches accordingly. This method is simple to implement. However, it is unclear how to appropriately set the controller's query frequency. Uh, setting this, this frequency is important uh, in order to achieve a response time bandwidth balance. In addition, since the controller must query and aggregate all the switches that run the application, the controller becomes then the bottleneck. And the question is, can we do better? So we propose the one big switch abstraction, or top sign in short, as a decentralized systematic approach for auto-scanning single switch application designs. This framework allows developers to focus on building applications for a single switch, and TOPSA will handle the heavy lifting of distributed programming burdens such as state sharing and fault tolerance. We are only in the beginning. We don't have this framework fully implemented yet. So why, we, why do we believe in this idea? So first, we think that uh, unlike traditional servers, communication is cheap by design. Switches can process a packet in order of magnitude faster than a server. Second, data plane applications may have weaker consistency requirements. And finally, switches are limited in what they can do. So the program semantics is not as generic as general purpose programs. And therefore, it is easier to extract the state and the updates. So a decentralized approach suggests information exchange between switches. This method eliminates the limitation of the centralized approach because the switches can exchange information only when necessary. However, unlike the centralized approach, this method is more challenging to implement. For example, it is unclear how to make sure that each switch sees a consistent view of the shared state. Um, <clears throat> it is also unclear, um, it is unclear how to determine what part of the state is shared and what part is private. As it is, it doesn't only depend on the application itself, but also the routing and other network properties. Another issue is how can we handle switch failures? And finally, uh, since the switches are connected by an unreliable network, uh, packets may get dropped or delivered out of order. There are many open questions and challenges, and I would like to focus on the first point in the next slides. NetChain introduced, introduced a replicated in-network key value store that is based on chain replication. In this model, we linearly order the switches to form a chain. We call the first switch, switch the head of the chain, 
and uh, the last switch, the tail of the chain. Rights are sent to the head of the chain and travel down the chain to the tail, which sends an acknowledgement to the writer. While reads uh, are executed down the tail, so chain replication provides strong consistency. How does all that work with stateful applications? Let's go back to our adaptive routing example. We now run it on these four switches. Each switch processes its own packets independently. When a new elephant flow is detected, that switch increments its counter and then generates a write request and sends it to the head of the chain. Then the write travels down the chain. Once it gets to the tail, uh, the tail generates an app up the chain to notify that the update is committed. And finally, each switch acts on the latest acknowledgement, uh, acknowledged value of the counter. So the next question we ask ourselves, is this uh, approach practical? Our evaluation goal is to answer the following question. Uh, what is the expected update latency of the write request? To do that, we write a simple distributed packet counter application that uses chain replication to share state. Notice that we send a write request on every packet. We set up an emulated environment using Mininet, and since it's an emulator and not a simulator, we are only able to emulate 50 megabits per second links and a limited number of switches. We use the topology that is shown uh, in the diagram. We send packets from H1 to H2 and measure the maximum difference between the local counter and the global counter. We call this difference stainless of reads, and this difference is essentially the delaying packets of the write request from the time it is generated to the time it is acknowledged by the chain. We expect to see a linear growth in latency as we increase the number of switches. So in this graph, you can see the stainless as a function of the number of switches in the chain. We vary the number of switches uh, between two and eight and send UDP packets of one kilobyte and half a kilobyte at a line rate speed. Therefore, we measure two different packet rates, five kilo packets per second in the red line and 10 kilo per, uh, packets per second in the blue line. As we can see from this graph, when we double the packet rate, stainless doubles as well. And as we increase the number of switches, stainless increases linearly. Intuitively, if we go back to our adaptive routing example, if we detect 10K elephant flows every second, then we'll send at most 13 mice flows packets using the wrong, the wrong routing policy. To conclude, we presented the concept of TOPSA, a systematic approach for auto-scaling uh, data plan applications. Although TOPSA is in the early stages and there are many open challenges to tackle, we believe that providing offload primitives and not ad hoc data plan applications is the way to increase the adoption of programmable switches in production environments. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, any questions? Um, let me check if there is anything in the chat. Mm. Yes, so somebody is asking me in, in the chat if uh, they can ask their hands to ask questions. So yes, you can raise your hands. So let me check uh, the person who has this question. Okay, so in the meantime, I have a question to you, Lior. Uh, when you mentioned that chain, mm, I, maybe I miss, sorry? Okay, I think I I, uh, I didn't get if you so did you re-implement basically chain replication in a in a smart switch way? Ah, uh, so did we just do lose? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so basically, NetChain uh, is a, a new network implementation of uh, chain replication. And, right, uh, but did you adopt that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my question was whether you basically, whether the code was available or you had to go and re-implement uh, this uh, chain replication protocol yourself. So we, we re-implemented it in uh, P4, but uh, just the normal case and not the uh, uh, view change or the reconfiguration part. Do you see any any immediate uh, challenges there, or is it more a question of engineering? 
adding the, reconfig the reconfiguration part. Yeah. Um, I think that there are many uh, things we can adopt from uh, NetChain, and I think that uh, uh, we might need to change uh, others, uh, other issues that, uh, that we get uh, in this specific scenario. Uh, 